but let's talk about two-step problems. But before we do, let's take a quick look at heating and cooling curves. I want to do a quick review on these. So heating curve, we see this positive slope. It's coming up. And uh, cooling curves, you see this negative slope, so they're going down. So we're losing energy in cooling curves. Our system is giving it away. In a heating curve, our system is absorbing energy. It's taking it in. And each section of the line, so we need to know where we are because that's going to dictate what we can use for a conversion to find energy or temperature or grams. We need to use these to help us. So. If I'm on this bottom line, I'm using the heat capacity of a solid. Then I start to melt, I gotta use that heat of fusion. Then I'm gonna raise the temperature again, that's heat capacity of a liquid. Then I'm gonna space out again, that's vaporization or evaporating, right? That's where we're gonna start to have to use our heat of vaporization. And then look at our cooling chart. So we're gonna start coming down from that really hot gas. We're gonna condense, that's heat of vaporization. Once it becomes a liquid, it has to cool all the way back down to zero degrees if we're looking at water. And then it's got to freeze back into a solid block of ice. So we're looking at heat of fusion. Those particles are coming closer together. And then once they're totally solid, then it can start to cool down again uh, using the heat capacity of a solid. So really, these graphs are telling us a story about what the particles are doing. If you need to review that, there's another video. Uh, but that's just a quick way of looking about what equations we need to use, where and when. Okay, So let's look at a problem together. This is a two-step problem. This is what I'm going to be asking you to do. So how much energy must be absorbed by a 150 gram sample block of ice at zero degrees that melts completely, then warms to 25 degrees Celsius? So where are we on this graph? That's the first thing that I want you to do. Okay, so we're looking at, it's got to melt completely. So it's got to melt, so I'm definitely here on my graph. And then it's going to warm to 25 degrees, so I'm over here on this graph too. So these sections, I am not using. I am only here. Okay. So what, already you can start to see, I'm gonna need to use heat of fusion, right? I'm gonna have to melt that ice. And then I'm also gonna have to use that heat capacity for liquid water to get it up to 25 degrees, because I'm gonna change the temperature. So let's look at another thing that we have to think about. Now we also have to think about what's going on with the particles, right? So let's start thinking about it. Now, we know that this is a heating curve. We know that we're always adding in energy. So we're going to add in some energy here. We're going to add in some energy here. I'm never at any point taking any away during this problem. But we got to look at where we are. So we're in these two spots. So the first one is what type of change? It's a phase change. So we're a solid block of ice at zero degrees. So we're cold. So we're going to say that that's cold. And we're not changing temperature at all during this whole process, going from right here all the way to the end of that elbow. So temperature stays the same. And then we got to look at the phase. So we're going from, we're melting. So that means we're going from a solid to a liquid. So we start as a solid, one block for solids. And then we end as a liquid. We got two blocks for a liquid. So just double check. I only made one account change, right? So if I think about these as accounts, like in my ATM, all I did was just add one. That's the only thing I can do. Now I can start looking at the next piece. I'm adding more energy in, and I'm going up to 25 degrees. So I'm changing my temperature. It's still a liquid, so I'm going to keep my two blocks the same. And then my temperature rose. It went to 25 degrees, so I show that on my bar chart by adding an extra square. And that's what's going on with my particles. Okay, so first they're spacing out, then they're speeding up. Okay, so I know the whole story now of what's going to happen. So let's start thinking about how we start to solve. So now we have to find out what do I have, what's given to me in this problem, and what am I trying to find? So in the problem, we see that we have 150 gram sample block of ice. 
we have a zero degrees Celsius. That's where we're starting. So this is uh, temp initial. Uh, and it warms to 25 degrees Celsius. So that's temp final. What else does it tell me? Oh, it's melting. That's another thing it's telling me. And then last but not least is, is what do I want? So, oh, it says right here if I read the problem, how much energy? So I just put those down into little categories. I just try to keep track of them, let them know where I am. So I have from zero degrees to 25, I have 150 gram block, it starts solid, and how much energy do I want, right? Now we can start to figure this out a little bit. So I like to break this down even further. Again, I like to keep track of what's going on in my graph, but now I gotta figure out what's happening with the math. So the story is telling me that it's going from a block of ice, it has to melt, then it's gonna warm, and I'm trying to find the total energy. So what equations am I gonna to have to use to figure all of these things out? So it starts as a block of ice and melts. That's a heat diffusion thing, it's melting. Then it's warming to 25 degrees. Ah, that's a heat capacity thing. That's a liquid. So I'm putting those on the arrows. And then I have to find the total energy. So how do we find the total of things? We add energy together. Because both of these are going to come out with, with energy. And that's what we're going to find. So very lastly, so let's look at this last bit. So how do I solve this? So let's look. So we went through all of these processes just to really make sure we know what equation we're using and when. So let's start to look. So we're gonna solve this, okay? So the first thing, it has to melt first. So I look at my chart and I notice that heat diffusion is 334 joules per gram. I do it like a regular conversion. This is a regular conversion. I'm taking my grams, turning it to energy. That's how much energy I get on the other side. That's how much energy it will take to melt a 150 gram block of ice, okay? Then it's going to warm to 25 degrees Celsius. It started at zero. The heat capacity of liquid water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Sorry, my light just shut off on us. But so we have to find our temperature, uh, our delta T, right? Our change in temperature. So I need to find that because we need this to find with, uh, with heat capacity, right? Now, I set this up a little differently. When working with a heat capacity, so whether it's a solid or a liquid, we're going to put it out front and what you solve for goes on top. So I'm solving for energy that goes out front on top. The rest of this, just unit cancellation. Grams cancel grams. Uh, Celsius cancels Celsius over here. Remember they have to be on opposite sides of this line here to cancel out. And then I just multiply it out. 4.18 times 150 times 25 equals 15,675. And then the last thing I needed on my roadmap was solve for the total energy, which was just adding them together. So that's the full path that we need to take to solve these problems. So let's make sure that we're, we're really breaking them down step by step and doing this. Don't skip steps. Don't stop putting your units on things. Don't stop canceling things out because that will make sure that you're on the right path to finding the right answer. You can get lost in this a little bit. So let's make sure that we're keeping track each step of the way. All right, everybody, try the next problems, and we'll keep going. Thank you.